Well, welcome viewers to the High Tech Oil Super Series. It's round number two and we're coming to you from Darwin, Northern Territory. We're at Hidden Valley Raceway, less than 15 minutes out of the city centre right here. And of course, we've got the TA2 muscle cars about to make their way on track. We've seen some exciting racings already earlier in the day. Our B drivers have been out. Of course, we've got the endurance coming your way later. There's $20,000 on the line in the Kings of the North battle that's happening this weekend for round number two. So that is headlining the High Tech Oil Super Series. Stephen White joining me here. Steve, great to be here in Darwin, Northern Territory and what an exciting race we've got coming up. Just amazing to be here at the Northern Territory. We've been welcomed so kindly and, and fondly by the Territory folk. Uh, but how amazing. You've got 20 TA2 cars there ready to do battle. Looking forward to the King of the North uh, race later on today. Enduro, first time in the world that they're doing a two-driver event. So uh, fantastic for High Tech All Super Series. And, uh, yeah, we just can't wait for a fantastic afternoon of racing. It's not just the TO2 muscle cars framed by High Tech Steel Frame, we've also got the combined sedans, the NT Hyundai Excels, and of course the HQ Cup, which is still underway, the Founders Cup, and we've still got one more race to come in that. Yeah, absolutely. Founders Cup for HQ Holdens. The Crocodile Cup was run yesterday, a long distance event, very similar to the TA2 event, and the, and the Hyundai Excels for the Northern Territory. Uh, the Territory 250, that one, and combined sedans, which is a local category that the uh, North Australian Motorsports Club have put on for us. So fantastic, along with drifting and a bit of everything else. What a fantastic event it's been. So far and it continues to be. This is something a little bit different, the combined sedans and their final race of the day. Ten laps here on this public holiday Monday at Northern Territory, the Hidden Valley Raceway. I'm at Captain Lachlan Mouse here alongside me. Let's have a look at how this is going to start. So Tim Playford, who's been the dominant driver all weekend in his Mazda 8 highway improved production car, he'll start from pole position. His closest rival, Stephen Johnston, in the Commodore improved production car out of grid position number two. And out of third position will be Michael Ricketts in the Nissan Pulsar that has kept us entertained right throughout the weekend as we get the race underway. Excellent start from Playford, the Mazda A Highway, launching off the line beautifully. And he will have a commanding lead by the time they get down to turn number one. Good start, too, from Rodney Jessup, that VT Commodore, freshly built improved production car with the 5.7 laser LS1 engine, moving up into third spot on the run down to turn one. Got the powerful jump there on Michael Riggs, who's already got that back in the first corner. The nimble Nissan Pulsar in the Super TT Championship manages to get the two litre in front, and of course, followed up by our Commodore Cup cars behind that. So we'll have to wait and see how everything goes. Bartlett, unfortunately, had mechanical issues in the previous race but he's back out there now starts at the back of the grid he's made one position already and it looks like Smith there is not going to give that up in the 35 car he's going to try and go around the outside of the hairpin it's a real assortment of cars. For those of you tuning in, you're probably wondering why we've got such a big assortment of cars all on the racetrack together. But this is the NAMSC, the North Australian Motorsports Club combined stand race. So we mix a variety of different classes together. So out on the track, you've got a mixture of improved production cars. You've got Commodore Cup cars, like the ones that used to run in the National Series back in the mid-90s through until 2012. And you've also got out there the Nissan Pulsar of Michael Rick which we see running in the Australian Super TT Championship. Yeah, great to have him come up all the way from Young in New South Wales. And of course, him and his family visiting the top end as part of this, not just coming up for the race, but coming up to explore, explore the Northern Territories. Jessa puts a bit of pressure on him as they go into turn one. As the back wheel is <laughs> off, and there is daylight under the back for Michael Ricketts. He's been doing it just about every corner on that Nissan Pulsar, built by Jordan Cox Motorsport as well. He's racing one of our TOG muscle cars here this weekend, and we've seen him in TCR as well. So not only is he very accomplished behind the wheel, but pretty handy on the spanners as well. And he is quite the front wheel drive guru, Jordan Cox. He became famous not just here in Australia, but all around the world at Bathurst a few years ago when we saw him making impossible overtaking manoeuvres over the top of Mount Panorama in a front wheel drive Honda Civic. And he has set up Michael Ricketts' car absolutely beautifully this weekend. It has impressed us right throughout the weekend, not just in terms of its nimble handling through the corners, but also its straight line speed. It hardly gives away anything to the bigger and more powerful V8s down this 1.1 kilometre main straight of Hidden Valley. And look how close he is to Johnson now, fighting for second position. I don't know, Johnson's had plenty of power all weekend as Ricketts pulls out alongside. He can't get up, and Johnson now winds up the big V8 and look at him start to stretch the legs as he goes down the main straight. 1.1 kilometres here at Hidden Valley, and now look at the gap. I'm sure it's not going to be a long day. Ricketts will close it up in the other sections of our racetrack every time we've got a turn. As we see now in the background, that's Lingy in the number 14 coming through on Gary Dempsey in the Commodore Cup as they go side by side to turn number one. 
inviting it out for position number five at the moment. Dempsey's not going to give it up, though, because as they come out of this turn number one, it now goes to a right-hander, and he gets himself an advantage, and he holds on to that position. A cracking battle between a couple of passionate Northern Territory races. Both of these gentlemen have put a huge amount of effort into getting this race meeting underway this weekend as the lane switches back to the inside for turn number five. Dempsey running right out across the exit of Griffin Strip, but he will be on the inside for the next left-hander at turn number six. So great racing room, great respect being shown between these two drivers who are great friends off the track. Well, Gary Dempsey got a couple of cars here this weekend. The top end electrical entries have also got Rossi Johnson running in the MT Hyundai XL. So his team very, very busy. As well as we see David Ling not only in this, but the HQs this weekend. Even a uh, spot of sprint car racing it was on Saturday <laughs> night as well. So he's been a very busy man and he's uh, sorted out a, a fair bit of fluid, I'd say, this weekend here in the hot conditions in Darwin. But they're very, very used to it. Of course, David Ling goes and competes in his HQ around the nation, not just here in the Northern Territory, but he leaves the Commodore Cup car here and does plenty of racing at this great circuit, a local here from the northern, from the Darwin region. Here we go down the main straight to see Johnson opens up that gap on Ricketts, but it's not as big as last time, I don't reckon, from my eyesight. I think he's just catching a little bit more and we'll see if he can close it up enough. He needs to get that position back through this back half of the track. The advantage that Ricketts will have given the hot conditions that we've got here in Darwin this weekend is that because he's in a lighter car that's going to look after its tyres and brakes a bit more efficiently than the bigger, heavier V8 Commodore of Stephen Johnston. So as this race progresses, I reckon that Ricketts will have the advantage as we see a bit of a brake lock up there into turn number six. This is the section of the circuit, which is very much what you would describe as pulsar territory. The quick direction changes through turns seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. This is where the pulsar is gonna come into its own and really put pressure on the Commodore. Rare mistake there from Ricketts. You see how he goes through this back section. The last few corners before they head onto the main straight. You can see him close it up. He doesn't have to get through the gears. He can hold it down. Accelerators to the floor as we turn around. Turn 14. They get the run onto the main straight. But Johnson, if he can't get in front of him there, you know that he's going to be able to stretch the legs as the safety car has been deployed out here on track. So we are going yellow on track here in our combined sedans racing. All right, now uh, coming out of safety car, final lap now for our combined sedans in their race here at Hidden Valley Raceway. And you can see Playford opens up that gap already and he's out of the way. Rickers down the inside of Johnson. Doesn't look like he's going to move up enough to get it done, though. He's going to have to fight. But look at him go up alongside. Pulls in. Johnson's going to be on the inside run, though, as they come out of turn number two. Can he get the run into three? Maybe Playford's already opened up the gap. Rickers closes it down. And look at that. Lockie, how close was that for Ricketts? <laughs> that was brave from Michael Ricketts. He sent it down the inside. He managed to get the overlap at turn number one and then using the more nimble handling of the Pulsar to his advantage through turns two, three and four. And now what he has to do is push really hard around this back part of the circuit to make sure that he's got enough of an advantage over that Commodore that it's not just going to blast past him again when they get back to the main straight. So excellent restart from Michael Ricketts. Gets up into second position. Johnston back to third position. And it looks like David Ling has relieved Gary Dempsey of what will be the highest place position in terms of the Commodore battle. Ricketts is not done yet. He's closed right into the, onto the back of Tim Flavor coming out of the last corner. Look, at this is going to be a drag race between the Nissan Pulsar and the Mazda 808 in the run to the finish line. The turbocharged grunt of the Mazda will see Tim Flavor take the win. But a bit of a nervous moment there for Tim with Michael Ricketts going into attack mode on the final lap after that safety car restart. Oh, and look, there was just point four of a second between Ricketts and Johnson as they cross the finish line. How close was that? Then it goes back to David Ling, Gary Dempsey, Steve Smith and Evan Bartlett will round out our seven. Unfortunately, Jessup, Roots and Cowie will not finish the race here in the combined sedans. Tim Plaver, though, dominant weekend for him in the NT combined sedans aboard that Mazda a Highway. Like I said, it started a life as a road-registered Mazda RX-3 race car with a rotary engine. But then after Tim Playford purchased it, he installed the turbocharged 1.8-litre Mazda engine. There we go, nine-tenths of a second, the official margin from Playford back to Ricketts at the finish line. Johnston home for third position. David Ling wins the Commonwealth Cup class ahead of Gary Dempsey back to Shane Smith. And good to see the West Australian Evan Bartle, who's come all the way up from Perth to participate this weekend, getting his Falcon across 
line seventh after some mechanical problems in the earlier race. And now winners down there in pit lane now with Stephen. Thank you, Maddie. We've got third placed here in the combined sedan, Stephen Johnston. Stephen, how was that race for you? Uh, a little bit challenging. Just uh, chasing gremlins and chasing the little cops and wheel in front of me. So, uh, yeah, a few fuel issues and just uh, not there today. So, unfortunately, uh, yeah, uh, Michael's done really well. And uh, congratulations to him and Tim. So, uh, not for me today. No worries. And as a local, fantastic to be racing in the Super Series. Absolutely, absolutely. Hope you guys can come back. Back to you guys. Back to you, Matty. We're going to go to a short break, ladies and gentlemen. Straight after that, our NT Hyundai XL Cup Finals. Welcome back to the High Tech Oil Super Series. Now, final round now for the NT Hyundai XL. 16 laps, Lockie. And look how it's going to start. So these are the two drivers who've been battling it out all weekend on the front row. The local boy, Zach Hannon, and Liam Hall, who's all the way up from Victoria. Then we go back to Tyson Mattiazzo, who's been having some good battles with Lachlan Son. Time with Shaney, he's travelled from interstate as well. And then Bob one with Matthew Powell. Dakota Masters, Samantha Hoskin, Rossi Johnson. That uh, is your top 10 in terms of the starting positions for this race. We're ready for a race start here, the final race of the weekend for the NT XLs. They've put on some great entertainment for us right throughout the weekend here at Hidden Valley, and this is their final race. A huge 16 laps as they get underway. And it looks like Hannon might get the run on the inside. The core staff, number 70, on the outside, the 49 of Liam Hall. You know you've got a good run on the inside there. A big advantage there as we look in the background there and it looks like we've got a big move coming. I'm just trying to see the number there. Rossi the Johnson. Silver. Rossi Johnson, yes, driving the Toyota 86 series this year, the top end electrical car. And look at the moves he's made. He's gone right up in the positions. Look at that, overtaken four cars already from rear of the field. So much confidence from Rossi Johnson right around the outside through turn one. He had to start a bit further back because the grid positions for this race are determined based on points for the weekend and he had a DNF a bit earlier on but there he's already battling it out with Ty Cheney heading up through turn number five. We see a couple of other drivers engaged in some combat a bit further back in the pack including Robert Holloway and Samantha Hoskin. Still plenty going on throughout the field here of the NT Hyundai XLs, but still out in front, Hannon. We'll have a look back to Rossi Johnson. Oh, no, there's contact made there. A bit of movement from Noel Wallace. I'm not quite sure if they made contact from the angle we saw, but the weather just got up in that ripple strip. But exciting things, they are pushing really hard in the XLs. 16 laps, so that's what they got to remember. We are only on the first lap. We don't need to risk it too much. It's actually the shortest race for the XLs this weekend. We had a couple of 24-lap races for these cars yesterday and a 22-lap race for the XLs this morning. But the two drivers who've been battling it out all weekend, they, there they are at the front of the field, Zach Hannon and Liam Hall. It's actually the best start that we've seen from Zach Hannon so far this weekend. The starts have probably been his biggest weakness, you would have to say, because he's actually lost the lead to Liam Hall and had to fight back. But here's a change in third position down the main straight. Tyson Mahiyansi so on the inside of Lockwood Son, and it's Matty Arzo who will make the move through there. Yeah, he gets that done under brakes. You see the back wheels just coming off the ground there. So Son, we'll see if he can try and recover through this back section of the grid. They're still too wide. They're coming out of turn number one. These races are really putting a show on for the fans here at Hidden Valley Raceway this weekend in Northern Territory. I love the fact we're only 15 minutes out of the city centre for racing so you can go and enjoy everything there is to do with the Northern Territory as well as come down and watch the racing on a great weekend like the High Tech Oils Super Series. And you can see now a little bit of a gap just opening up there as Mediazzo will just pull away there in the V8 race experience Hyundai Excel. In the background though, it looks like Rossi Johnson, he's made a heap of positions now, already up into fifth place. Rossi Johnson, a very talented steerer, and we've seen him competing at a national level in the Toyota 86 racing series the last couple of seasons as well. So he's certainly got experience when it comes to racing in one make series. And this weekend, Gary Dempsey invited Rossi Johnson to have a drive in one of his XLs, and he's been doing a great job, as we would expect. A bit of a wide moment there for Liam Hall, dropping the right wheels out over the exit ripple strip, coming out of the 14th and final corner. That'll just cost him a of momentum on the main straight and you can see that the margin has opened up between Hannon and Hall. It's now almost a second as they start lap number three. 
it's only five horsepower can make a massive difference in these cars. Very stock as the back wheel is off the ground. We're seeing a whole heap of daylight there for our second place there of Lockie Hall. He's pushing that car hard and we've um, I wait and see whether he can catch him through this section of the racetrack. I don't think he's got much on Zach Hannon at the moment. As Hannon can just keep his cool in the 16 lap race like you alluded to before. There's been many more laps, 24 lap race earlier in the weekend. So they'll be very conditioned to the heat today. It's been a little bit cooler than it has been over the weekend. So hopefully they'll be doing very comfortable in the car, I suppose. More comfortable than what they were yesterday. It's been extremely hot. Oh, is that Trump coming out of here? He can't take too much advantage of that one. The background, Matty Arzo is just holding on. Sometimes you've got to think of some of these drivers. Now they've found their position. We've had the start. They've gone two and three wide coming into turn number one. A, a safety car for one of them could be a big difference in this race. Rossi Johnson just coming through in the background, the top in electrical Hyundai. Now they've set the pace and they've sort of wound these cars up. We're not seeing them gain as much as probably what we would have in the first couple of laps either. What we have seen as well is that uh, a lot of young drivers are using this category as a stepping stone from go-karts into circuit racing. It's a category that has really exploded in popularity in pretty much every Australian state and territory. It started back in 2013, so 10 years ago now, the XL Series, and there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these cars racing all over Australia. We had them in our first round of the high-tech oil Super Series of Winton. That was a round of the Victorian XL Series. This weekend, it's a round of the Northern Territory XL Racing Series. In our next round of Queensland Raceway, we're going to have the inaugural round of the XL Racing National Series. So we'll be seeing some of the top XL drivers from all over Australia travelling to Queensland Raceway for the opening round. The series will also travel to Sydney Motorsport Park and then finish up at our final round at Calder Park. We just saw there, that was Dakota Masters in car number 17, making a move up the inside of Valenez Vaults for what will be position number nine. And Dakota Masters having her first ever race meeting this weekend. She stepped up from go-karts and she's only 15 years old to the inside of the road. But Zach Hannon, our race leader, still under a bit of pressure here. Just over three laps remaining. And now I'll get back to what I was trying to explain on the previous lap. What Liam Hall needs to do is he needs to get this part of the circuit right. Not do what he did on the previous lap. Make sure that he keeps it on the black stuff. Then he really needs to maximise his exit from turn 14 to be as close as he can to take advantage of the slipstream down the main straight. Here we go. This is about the closest that he's been all race long. Can he do it? He just has a little bit of a moment, has a look. He's probably going to try and find some fresh air. I think he's covering off as well. No, he covers off too. The number 70, it's on into turn number one. Have a look at this. He's had to cover him off too as he came up alongside him. Liam Hall had a moment. He's on the outside now. Zach Hannon on the inside in the core staff entry. They go around. If he can hold on to this though, he's got to run into the next corner because he'd be on the inside line. They leave each other enough room out there as well. Great driving from both drivers. Now the right-hander. Will he get the move? Signed off. They come down to turn number five under brakes, and there it is. He'll get it done. It's not over yet. Does he get in front? They leave each other just enough room for two high end excels, but now it's down into turn number six. Lucky, look at this. No lock up on the brakes there. He's back in front. Nice drive there from Hannon and Hall. Great precision driving from both of our race leaders. That was six corners in a row that those two cars ran side by side and did not exchange a millimetre of pace throughout that entire sequence. So great respect showed between the two drivers and it's Hannon who just manages to maintain the lead. We've got a couple of laps to go here. Bragging rights in this race to well and truly up for grabs as it's a repeat of what we saw on the previous lap. It's going to be Hall who will have the advantage of the slipstream and it's going to be Hannon who will move to the inside and take the defensive line on the run down into turn one. Well, it's a repeat of last lap, isn't it? Oh, they're so close now. They almost touch bumper bars. And then the outside again, it's going to be Hall. It's a repeat of last lap. They come into turn number one, Liam Hall on the outside. Zach Hannon on the inside. They leave each other room again. Let's have a look at the exit here. Is there any advantage? It looks almost the same. 
have pretty much a carbon copy of what we saw on the previous lap. So once again, it'll be Hall who will have the inside line as they head up to turn number five. And yet again, they go side by side. Can Hannon maintain some overlap coming out of the corner? I think he's got his nose just alongside the rear quarter panel. Back up the inside, he comes into turn six. This time, though, Hall has done a better job to keep his nose in front. And he'll be well positioned to be on the inside for the next right-hander at turn number seven. It's Liam Hall who goes through to take the lead with just over a lap remaining in this finale for the XLs at Hidden Valley. Much more difficult to pass through this section of the racetrack in turns 11, 12 and 13. As they dip the car in, Liam Hall now leading our final race in the NT Honda XLs. The problem now for Liam Hall, though, is that he is going to be the one who gives the toe to Zach Hannon, who got a really good exit out of turn number 14. And it's Hannon who comes back down the inside of Liam Hall, down the main straight, a drag race between the two XLs. And this time it's Hannon who has the momentum and also the preferred line into turn number one. It's the final lap here for the NT Hyundai XLs, and it's exciting at the front. These two fighting it out. Liam Hall and Zach Hannon. Hannon now taking the lead back in the core staff. Number 70, the back wheel's off the ground. It's not even moving. He plants it down out on the grass now for Liam Hall. Liam Hall tried to hang tough around the outside there, but ultimately just ran out of road on the exit. And it's Hannon who recaptures the lane. What a masterclass it has been from these two drivers at the front of the field, demonstrating that it's possible to race in close combat but be clean and fair at the same time. They've got a lapsed car that they're going to have to negotiate their way past in the final sequence of corners just to add another bit of extra spice to this race. And it's a tricky spot on the circuit that they have caught up to the number 12 car as well. The Alina Ann's false. So they go left, so they go right. In the end, they're going to have to go around the outside of vaults there in a rather awkward position on the racetrack. They do so safely, and I reckon that might have given just enough of an advantage to Zach Hannon to get the job done. Yeah, Liam Hall not close enough to take advantage of any slipstream or exit speed. As he goes wide again, he's right out on the grass. He needs to pull it back before the arm co. He does, so he will maintain that second position as they head down to the chequered flag now. And you watch them cross the line. It will be... Zach Hannon again wins the race in the number 70, followed by Liam Hall, a commanding lead over the rest of the field. They're almost 19 seconds behind them. So we'll wait for them to come around here, and there it is. Third place, Tyson Mariazzo will go through. Oh, in the background, that looks like it might be the number 27. It is of Robert Holloway, so a bit further back down the field. Not Rossi Johnson, who we're waiting across the Start finish line and get himself a position in this one. Lachlan Son will finish out in fourth position. Rossi Johnson in fifth, right behind him. Almost got him at the end, didn't quite get close enough. Ran out of the laps he needed. We'll check out the high-tech oils replay now. And this is Robert Holloway there. And spins himself out of the top end electrical car. A little bit of curb, unsettles the car and unfortunately spins it around. Luckily, no other cars out on track around him. No, so a fairly uneventful escape there, thankfully, for the car of Hongwei. Noticing there as well that there are some marbles building up off the racing line, so you run out of grip if you venture out there. But Zach Hannon, in a ding-dong battle with Liam Hall, gets the win by 0.7 of a second. Tyson Mahiazzo home for third position ahead of Lachlan Son, who had another good battle with Rossi Johnson there in the closing stages. Ty Wachini in sixth back to Matthew Powell. Noel Wallace, Dakota Masters and Alain Ann Foltz rounding out your top ten. Great to see the NT Hyundai Cells out on the track here at Hidden Valley Raceway as part of the High Tech Oil Super Series. And here we go, the results from the weekend. Zach Hannon with a dominant wins in all the races there and leading us with 200 points, Lachlan. 200 points for the round ahead of Liam Hall and Tyson Mahiazzo. So they will be your overall podium finishes for the weekend. The consistent Lachlan Son finishing in fourth position ahead of Ty Lachini. Then we go back to Noel Wallace, Matthew Powell, Dakota Masters, Rossi Johnson ends up in ninth after that DNF. And Samantha Hoskins will round out your top ten when it comes to our points results for the weekend. Let's catch up with our winners down in pit lane with Stephen. Thanks, Matty. And we've got uh, a resounding winner here, four out of four. Zach Hannon, the local guy, has won the Valley 250. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you, mate. Yeah, feels good. Uh, nice hot racetrack out there, though. But, uh, yeah, feels good to win it all. 
obviously you've been racing these cars for about three years. Would this be uh, a pretty satisfying win to be winning at the High Tech Oil Super Series round? Yeah, it feels great to uh, win, especially uh, with uh, the, down, the guys that came from down south. I only normally race the people up here, but it feels good to beat some in the Staleys. No worries. Good on you, Zach. Thank you very much and well done. And back to you, Matty, up at the commentary. Well, he has, wasn't mucking around. Four wins from four races. Like he said, inter, interstate drivers coming up here and uh, competing with him. He's dominated again. Great result for him as well, for Zach Hannon. We congratulate him on a win here in the Hellenda XL 250. We're going to take a short break and be back with our HQ Holden Founders Cup final race. There was that contact initially, so a five second penalty first for Jordan Cox for not doing the start correctly. He was actually out of line, out of his start box effectively. 15 seconds for that contact with Tyler Everingham, and then that little spot of post-race contact we saw after the end of race number four with Everingham into the back of Cox, that was a 15 second penalty for Tyler Everingham. But this is, this is all on, like for the points for the round. So this is, it's overall points across all six races that will give us the winner for the TA2 King of the North and $20,000. Here is the grid lineup. It is the Thomas Brook combination starting off the pole. The Colters, what a fantastic effort from them with a second place finish here yesterday to put them out of P2. Gartner and Vidot out of position three. Formosa and Filippetto go back to Leonard and Wright. McAllister, Mediki, Rice, Everingham, Jackson Hughes from grid position eight. Zach Loshelfo uh, out of grid position nine, a single driver, and Haynes and Bates out of 10. Then we go into position number 11, Hume and Hackwood will be there. 12th is Chenny and Thornborough, who's been very quick. Herna Manuel in 13th, Michael Rowell on a solo in 14th. Lee Stibbs on his own in 15th, of course. That's another tough one. What I like there is we see Herna Manuel going to be coming out of 13th, Josh Haynes and Nick Bates out of 10. Now, we, we saw what they did up the front in their solo races. If we can get them in the car in the final stint, that will be absolutely amazing to see how they fight it out. We saw most of the, inverted commas, faster guys starting the race yesterday because they started, the other driver now starts this race. So whoever started yesterday finishes the race today. So Paul Manuel will start the number 10 Nathan Hearn machine. So Nathan's going to be in, and you would think they would probably try and leave him depending on the pit stops. Yesterday we saw the majority stop at the same time on a safety car. There were a couple of separations between that, but... If they go different strategies and we don't see safety cars, it's going to be really, really interesting to follow. Yeah, Nick Bates in the car in the first stint as well. So that means Josh Haynes will be in the later stage of the race. You would expect Nick Bates to probably go forward from where, you know, where they are starting, uh, certainly. But we'll look for that compulsory driver change and who's going to get in, who's going to get out. But we'll go through the starting drivers for you, certainly in this first segment, because we're not going to see anything pit stop-wise till at least lap 15 and that is not even the halfway mark of the race. Now, one of the things I know is Tyler Everingham is going to start this race. We won't see Jordan Cox, so we're not going to see that continuation of what we saw on track at the final yeah, part that, of the last race. That wasn't planned. That wasn't planned. That's just what happened from yesterday with uh, some of the driver combinations are very, very close in lap times, and, and so it didn't really matter for them which one started, which one was going in second yesterday. So we're getting ready to go racing here. This is it. We're, we're creating history here this weekend in Darwin. The first ever TA2 Endurance paired driver race in history, anywhere in the world. We are about to go green for 35 laps here at Hidden Valley Raceway, the TA2 Muscle Car Series, framed by High Tech, the King of the North. And this is about to explode. Will it be a race of attrition? Who will get to the end and win the $20,000? At the moment, it is the 68 team that is in the box seat as we go green here at Hidden Valley. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Tim Brook now. He's on the inside line, but following Gartner as well on the 22 gets to the inside of Porter, and they get through turn number one. They're two cars side by side. Oh, three cars. That Matty McKeldon on the outside there. And he's in the 
Kubota car there. They'll be trying to try and claw back some position. This is, oh, no. Mick Rowell, Mick Rowell was just off track, so he just got guided off there, off turn number one. So let's get through this first lap. Tim Brooks, certainly one of the quicker guys out there. That combination between him and Dylan Thomas has been very, very competitive out of the weekend. They are the points leaders for the King of the North title at the moment. So, you know, they need to finish up top. There was a little bit of congestion outside of the top four there, and you can see them backing up. That's... Uh, the Leonard Wright Mustang was sort of in there. Someone got a bad run through turn number six, and look at the gap it's created behind the top four cars. With that fourth position car, the number 49 of Nicholas Filippino, you know, paired with Chris Famosa for the weekend. I think it was Tebs in the background just giving off the white car as well. So, wait and see though, Filippetto and of course, uh, Chris there doing a fantastic job this weekend in the number 49 and they managed to get themselves the fourth position in the endurance yesterday. Chris Formosa doing a fantastic job and he'll be coming in the latest and he's much more comfortable on a degraded tyre as well. So have a big run down here in the turn number one. Uh, looks like Tim Brook is going to hold on over Brad Gardner but there's plenty of action in the background still happening that turn number one is uh, a very exciting part of the racing here with the TA2 muscle cars. Well, Brad Gartner hasn't had the best of weekends. He uh, got turned around in his previous race as well, which was put down to a racing incident. So they'll be trying to salvage something out of this. Remembering the, the results of this race, how they cross the line is not one, two and three for that King of the North title in the $20,000. It is over all six races and both driver combinations. So this is the car to watch right now. They do have a lead, 284 with the number seven Jackson Rice Ford Mustang second on 245. And then uh, like Nathan Hearn and uh, the Castor car back in the uh, 235 mark. So it, it's pretty competitive, but you've got to give the advantage to the number 68 team right now. And they're pretty comfortable out in front, but boy, we have a long, long way to go, Matt. 35 laps for the TO2 muscle car. They're quick around here at Hidden Valley Race. Well, we've seen them in the 109s already. Will they go any faster on a fresh set of tyres? I'm sure they've got green rubber on for this final race with 35 laps. We're only on the start of lap number three. And look at that, Tim Brook doing a nice job out of running. He's very, very quick. He's aggressive on the car. I think you need to be with these cars as well. Brad Gartner just settled down behind him. And I love seeing him. He called out that Mick Rowell. Nick Rowloff, he was towards the rear of the field, but definitely an off there. See if he can get back on. He's down in the heavy grass, but just trying to get, he should be able to get back out on track. So that's down at turn number one as Brooke continues to lead. Now, the other factor we've got to take into the equation here, Matt, is this is probably the heaviest these cars have ever run on fuel. To get them home to 35 laps, there is no fuel stop. These cars will be weighing a lot more than they usually do with their fuel loads. So these starting drivers will have to manage that with the tyre situation as well. Something to think about. I'm sure the teams have thought about it. Well, they'll definitely be thinking about that right now. Brad Gardner looks like he's just trying to find some clean air to try and keep the temperatures in the car down. Sometimes it's not about leading the race, going into the driver change. We'll check out one of our high tech oils replays here. Mark Rutcher on the inside. The number 50 car, Andrew Fisher there, driving that solid this weekend after Paul Hadley's had it. But here we go, Michael Rowe in the background, the 15. Looks like he's just done that on his own accord, a bit too fast. Maybe missed his braking markers coming into turn one. Well, he has raced sprint cars, so he was turning the right direction with a little bit of stagger going on as uh, this race continues. But he managed to get back on track. It did not bring out a safety car. That's the important thing here as we count the laps down for 35 and this race continues here at Hidden Valley. So the majority of the field stopped on lap 15. The advantage of that is they're losing less time with the safety car out there. If the rest of the race goes green, which I don't think it's going to, as we're about to go back racing here, those that haven't pitted, if they do their lap, if they do their compulsory pit stop under green, they're going to be compromised if we don't get another safety car. Well, it's risk versus reward, isn't it? As Tim Brook leads away now, Nathan Hearn back in that car, but he's a lap behind. So we'll wait and see how that one goes. I'm come out to second position there. Yeah, they're, gonna... down, they're down in 15th. They'll definitely be down a lap. Already a dive down the inside, and you'll go back and get back on the lead lap. So he's not going to muck around, Nathan Hearn. Very experienced race. He might be young, but he's over in America. He's had to deal with all the mind games over there. He's proven to them what a talent he is, and now he's back here racing at Hidden Valley Race. As you see, some cars in the background just getting out on the grass once again. 
The doors open on the number 20 Hargraves Gillison Camaro, and that, that car's got more race tape on it than the 3M factory. Well, all right, let's just get things settled down here, and I'm not going to say safety cars breed safety cars again. I didn't say it the first time, that was post the safety car. Oh, we've got Tev off in the 93. He's only just come out of the pits from his compulsory pit stop, so he was one of the single car entries that took the stop. There's only three cars that I can figure out did not take their compulsory pit stop on that lap 15 window opening. The majority of the field certainly did, as we keep an eye on the number 68 Mustang that is your race leader. Look at the amount of bodywork on the Hargraves car now flapping around on the front. Now, race control will be looking at that. If it becomes a dangerous object or starts to fly apart, they may get pulled in. They'll have to race take that one as well. That's not going to last very long at 250 plus kilometres an hour here on a 1.1 kilometre long main straight here at uh, Hidden Valley Raceway. So a lot of damage on that race car. They've certainly been in the wars right throughout the weekend. They've been chasing electrical issues. They finally got it cured and it was a fuel injector issue. They've ch completely changed the entire electrical system and that car looks like it has been to war. Currently second on track at the moment. So one of only three cars that has not pitted. There's your leader, there's second, and in third it's the 21 of Zach Lachelpo, who's done a really good job, very, very good job. But if you have a look through the left-handers, you've got the, the door swinging, the driver's door swinging open on the 20 as well, so that's probably not ideal. Not as much of a door on these cars. They may be forced to come in to take that pissed off very shortly because they're going to have to tape down the front of the car and that door issue is going to have to be fixed. And I'll wait to see what race control have to say about they it. They will not be able to do the repair while they are doing the compulsory pit stop and the driver change. After the 90 seconds, then they can make repairs. So they'll be thinking about the strategy now. I reckon they're swinging on a safety car. They, ideally, they'll be swinging on a safety car. Currently sitting in second in the number 20 local search entry of Hargraves and Gilson. But the way it's still going on in the background there, Hayden Jackson looks like alongside. God, didn't Jared Hughes do a great job in the opening stint of the race? And Jared Hughes did an outstanding job in the 81 car, so Jackson's now in the car. Jordan Cox, he will be one to watch. He's trailing some bodywork as well at the back of the floor. He's been in the wars and out of it and caught penalties and we know he's got the speed. He will be spectacular and he's up against Josh Haynes. So there's two of the young guns, two of the quickest guys out there in the midfield at the moment running in about that eighth and ninth position, having taken their compulsory pit stop and Cox has gone fast slap with an 11-2. He is on a charge. Let's head down to the pit side with Steve. Oh, uh, uh, Brooks, he's still leading, so uh, we're just holding out, holding our strategy. Uh, yeah, so um, I guess that we're in a bit of a good position with points coming into the race, so um, we don't need to go for the win. So I guess it was one of those strategies, we didn't expect everybody to come in, we thought some of the uh, the lead drivers may have stayed out with Brooksy, but um, yeah, so I, I guess we sort of felt like track position was keeping us a bit safer. So although it's probably got, probably gone against us a bit more than what we had planned on this one, um, but if he can run, we assume we'll get another safety car the way that uh, the heat and the, and the drivers are, are out there. So um, hopefully another safety car comes in whilst his window's open and uh, that works and puts us back in, into a safe spot. But uh, yeah, we're not racing for the win, we're racing for the weekend. So the smartest decision was to try and keep out of trouble, stay at the front, and therefore we're in control of our own destiny. Thanks, Dylan. Yeah, holding track position is probably important for the leader. Uh, the Lee Stibbs car has been in again. It's got some overheating issues that had actually fallen off, and so they've cleared the radiator a couple of times. And we did notice actually a little bit of patch of oil under the number four Mark Crutcher car with Jordan Cox. So hopefully we'll just keep an eye on those guys for the remainder of the race. Back to you, Matty. Well, it might not be Tyler Everingham, though, who's putting it back in, but uh, it is his teammate Jackson Rice now putting the pressure on Jordan Cox, and there is no love lost between these teams here this weekend. They just swapped some colours across the doors, so, yeah, lo lo love and fear and war. Now, Dylan was just talking about needing another safety car. They've got three laps to do their compulsory pit stop. If they do, if they do it under green, oh, it's going to hurt them. It is seriously going to hurt them. Well, Jordan Cox has just come down the inside now, Jackson Rice, so they are going to go 
toe-to-toe -to -toe in this fight as they battle it out as Cox gets the wheel out on the dirt. It's going to be a fight for seventh position. Josh Haynes in front, who was our PWR Pole Award winner this weekend, and he is now right on the back of the 51 car, Graham Chenney, who's uh, probably changed out. There's 51's gone through the pit stop now. And... Yeah, it'll be even for Burrow in the car. We, uh, unfortunately, we got told it was uh, was Steve probably starting the 11, so apologies to the boys there. It was, uh, was Michael in the car, so... All right, let's calm things down, but let's go back to that compulsory pit stop window closing inside of three laps. And if the leader oh, no. hasn't done it, oh, there's contact, and away goes Stibbs into the tyre wall. He goes. I don't know if there was actual contact made. They're just was that trick? That was triggered off in that sort of eighth, ninth, tenth area. But Stibbs was actually down a lap, having pitted earlier on. And boy, hasn't it gone wrong for the championship leader at the beginning of this weekend of the Arrow Financial number 66 Camaro. Coming into this round as a solo driver, choosing not to have a co-driver for these long since in the endurance, yes. And I'm not quite sure of contact made there with Josh Haynes. He's on the inside. Sips may have just gave him a little bit of room, dropped a wheel out on the dirt, which might have put him unstuck at that point. So hopefully that won't, won't hurt Haynes. That's the biggest thing here for them. They need to try and fight their way back to Haynes and Bates combination in fifth position at the moment. Down there and the bonnet is off. He's out of the car there and our crew are on site. Obviously the Hugh McAllister car unfortunately race a fair bit earlier after coming off down the end in turn number one that car's got an issue but Teb's car smoking down there at the end of the main straight it's on the inside in the drag strip area so it's off the main racing line and it's behind a wall so it's in a safe position to walk back through to be honest as you can see grabbing the fire extinguisher there as the smoke continues to come out of that car something just smouldering away in the background what we've seen with the cars going on track with the material getting up underneath the cars with the exhaust systems and the brakes, it's actually under that car that's been get, catching there, having the fire issues. So I, we, I, I think the safety car call was made because of the fire risk and maybe having to get one of the fire rescue vehicles down there potentially to stop uh, any further damage with that car. So they're still working at it as uh, Aaron's actually just dug a whole heap of grass out of the right uh, front brake intake on that car. Look how much grass is down in front of the car. I think you're right there because when they've had the wheels off in previous races, it's right behind the wheel arch. There's a big gap in there. The grass comes up, gets stuck in there. If it's got some temperature off the exhaust well, or something you talk else about in there, it, well, brake, it's going to Brake rotor temperature on application is probably in that 800 to 900 degree range. Well, check out the high tech oils replay, and here it is. Aaron Tebb takes himself across the grass, and that'll th be through the back section there, through turns 10 and 11. Slides the car around and just collecting all that grass on the way through. You can see it coming off the front splitter of the car. Unfortunate for him, and I hope he misses the orange higher sign. He does as he goes through. Um, manages to keep it off all that, and that's why we saw him go back in the drag strip. He's tried to keep all that grass off the racing line as well, but. Every time we see them take an excursion off the track, they're coming into pit lane having to remove that grass because of the temperature reasons. How's your maths? All right. All right, so currently the Thomas Brook number 68 Mustang, who was leading the points for the North top of the, the King of the North title, is in 12th position. Your race leader is, uh, that'll be the four of Jordan Cox in the car. As we're on the final four laps of this endurance race to see who's going to be king of the north. Leading us at the moment, of course, is Jordan Cox in the Crusher Developments number four. He's not going to be able to do enough, I think, to clinch that big $20,000 purse for the win this weekend. Josh Haynes behind him, but it's all eyes on the number 12 of Dylan Thomas and Tim Brook. Thomas now back in the car, and we believe if he can hold that position, he may become the king. He may get the crown. They've got a 22-point gap at the moment to the seven car. The seven car with Jackson Rice at the wheel is currently in the fifth position. All right, so 318 at the moment plays 296. The 68 car has it covered right now. They can't afford to go backwards. And even if the Rice Everingham 7 got to the front in the next three laps as we're about to complete lap number 32, I don't think it'll be enough for them unless the 68 car slides back. And you wouldn't think so based on the pace that we've seen over the weekend. So obviously their strategy, they've had the calculator, they've worked out what they were going to lose doing that stop on the green and who was closest to them in the points. Well, Rice has just dropped back into eighth position as well. well. We've seen him the... going back and now you can see Dylan Thomas has actually made the pass on him. So... 
He is dropping back through the field. Some issues there with the number seven, Rice Everingham car. I'm not quite sure what's happened. We'll have to try and figure that out. So much action going on track at the moment. Of course, the IES number 51 entry up on our screens. Third position at the moment. And Thornborough driving that car is the second driver in the stint. And he's been super fast. The young fella, uh, obviously from the Toyota 86s and other things like that. So we'll wait and see if he can make a move on Josh Haynes. I don't think he's quite close enough at this point of the race. But there's still a few laps left to go. But we need to find out what happened to the number seven car because they've it looks gone, like they've gone from Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas, they've Dylan definitely Thomas lost, might be right. They've definitely lost some spots in that last lap. So your top three, Jordan Cox. It is the Haynes Bates, 37 in second. The Cheney Thornborough, 51 in third. Followed by Hume and Hackwood. How's that for a result of this final race? Boy, they've had some dramas as well this weekend. They're currently in fourth. Gardner Bideau in the fifth position. They were running second before that pit stop cycle on the safety car. So they've lost a little bit of time as well. Oh, no, that's right. Thomas is down a lap. He is actually down a lap in 12th position. So although he's making a lot of pay, a lot of places out there, he has to regain that lap. So yep. he has not got, got past the still in Rice the 12th position. That's the thing they need to worry about. And he's only four spots behind the uh, number seven anyway. So it is points advantage to the number 68 CXC Mustang. They obviously knew what they were doing. They've had the calculators like we've had them out here in the commentary box, and my brain's frying because <laughs> it's hot and I can't do maths. Great to have Eden Thornborough joining us here for this endurance race. As we saw a lot of the drivers didn't team up with main game drivers. Only Josh Haynes and Nicholas Bates have decided to go with an outside entry. And he's done a fantastic job for Eden Thornborough and Hayden Hume in the background. What a race from them today. Hopefully they can bring that home. Just a couple of laps left to go in this race as they come round and complete another lap. Jordan Cox, look at him in the number four. It's battered, it's scarred. It's got race tape holding it together, but it's in the lead. And we're on the final lap here for the challenge for the King of the North, TA2 Muscle Cars, brought to you by High Tech Steel Framing. Jordan Cox will be looking for the win for the race, but it's not going to be enough for the top of the King of the North title with the TA2 Muscle Car Series framed by High Tech. The 68 car back in the 12th position is in the box seat to take the overall win for every race calculated over the weekend on points. And they really have been dominant. Can you say consistently dominant or dominantly consistent? Yeah, they came out of round number one, two there in third position in the championship two. Not by getting wins, but just being in the top five every race. So a great little combination of the CXC Mustangs. So we'll see if we're gonna crown them king of the north. Jordan Cox coming around. He's halfway through his final lap. He's just got to get through these few corners. Josh Haynes, what a fight back from them. Teamed up with Nicholas Bates this weekend. And Graham Cheney and Ian Thornborough, too, in third position at the moment. They're still going to be happy about winning 35 laps to have to come out here. The cars are all scared up. Oh, no. Zach Lashapo and the number 21 Tempest Solutions car has stopped. But our winner crossing the finish line, Jordan Cox and Mark Crutcher and the Crutcher Developments Mustang will get the 35 lap. Endurance race win here this afternoon at the High Tech Oil Super Series. Josh Haynes in second, Eden Thornborough in third. We are waiting for the CXC number 68 to come across the line. They were in 12th at the start of the previous lap. It should be enough for them to win the overall King of the North title by our calculations. I think they'll be pretty comfortable with it. Some big drives through the field. Hume and Hackwood in the 45 Challenger, congratulations to them with a fourth place finish. That is an outstanding result considering uh, they were off track earlier on in the weekend as well. But boy, we're talking about drama and what's going on here for a, a world first for TA2 with driver changes and things like that. That was, that was a pretty decent motor race. Oh, it was fantastic to watch and, of course, to see these young races. Jordan Cox coming out of TCR. He's well known for his front-wheel drive racing, but hasn't he really impressed in the TO2 Muscle We'd love to see him join the series in one of these. Mark Crutcher giving him an opportunity to join the team. And, look, he's going to do the celebration burnout down the back there in front of the crowd here at Hidden Valley Raceway. What a round two of the TO2 Muscle Cars framed by High Tech Steel Framing. And here we're going back to... Victory Lane, I'm sure, to get this one. I know he may not be the King of the North this weekend, but you've got to take a victory when you get it. The TO2 Muscle Car results from the final race here at Hidden Valley Raceway. Crutcher and Cox will take the win with Haynes and Bates in second. Jenny and Thornborough in third. And then we round them out. It's got Hearn Manuel, Gardner Vidot, Hume Hackwood, McKeldon Zukanovich, Rice Everingham, Leonard Wright, and, of course, Michael Rowell there uh, showing up in 10th position in the number 15 car.
Andrew Fisher in the 11th spot ahead of the Thomas Brooks 68, and that should be your TA2 King of the North winners. And uh, the 20 of Hargraves and Jellison in 13th, completing the top 15. Zach Lashalpo, although, uh, had an off there on that last lap. So, what a race. And we think it is going to be the number 68 Mustang taking the TA2 King of the North. 321, there's confirmation there on the screen from the Rice Ebringham car on 288. The Hearn Manual Challenger on 286 tied with the Cheney Thornborough Challenger for 286. We've got a tie for third. Back to Gartner and Vitto, Haynes and Bates in sixth, Leonard and Wright in seventh, followed by Crutcher and Cox, Formosa Filipino and Jackson and Hughes overall for the inaugural TA2 King of the North, part of the High Tech Oils Super Series here at Hidden Valley. Crossing down to Steve on pit lane. Jordan, <laughs> fantastic effort, and what a weekend. Yeah, crazy up here. What, what a phenomenal track, Darwin. Darwin's got a fantastic facility here in Hidden Valley, so yeah, super happy to be here. The Trans Am's put on a, uh, a great show, I think, here, so. Yeah, so the TA2 cars, obviously everything that's come in has got a touch or a rub. Obviously a busy race, and obviously kept you and Mark busy during the whole race. Absolutely, mate, yeah, it's, it's like that. I think that's the spirit of TA2 racing. It's just hard, hardcore stuff, so uh, I love it. Yeah, can't wait, can't wait to be back if, uh, if you'll have me. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Well, what a fantastic weekend it's been here at uh, Hidden Valley Raceway. Uh, we've had heat, we've had dramas, we've had accidents. It's, it's all been on. All right, we're going to throw you down to Matt Kavanagh down on pit lane with our winners for the TA2 King of the North. Third place today, the number 51, Graham Cheney in Thornbury. Well done. Congratulations. Well done, mate. Thank you. I'm going to give this to you both. It's a didgeridoo made in the Northern Territory. All right. Third place in today's race. Thanks, Very quickly, we need to go to our second place. Kate Warden, the NT Minister for Sport. Our runner-up, Jackson Rice and Tyler Everingham. We'll give you your award, guys. Well done. Can take the didgeridoo. And our winner for the King of the North, a $20,000 prize money here for High Tech Oils, round number two in the TA2 Muscle Cars, presented by George Gambino. Come forward, $20,000. Dylan Thomas and Tim Brook. Congratulations, mate. Give them the didgeridoo. Well done, gents. Fantastic race. Gary Dempsey from the Phew, NAMPS. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's been it from Hidden Valley Raceway here, round two of the High Tech Oil Super Series. We'll catch you for round number three from Queensland Raceway, the 2nd to the 4th of June. You've got to come to Sydney to get drinks, though.